guys, we are now into my favorite topic of the day, honestly. I know we've got a big main topic, but this is the one that's the main event for me. <laughs> I'm so excited about the War of Rohirrim. I'm so excited about this. I have been dying to see this trailer. It finally dropped. And for me, it did not disappoint. Take us to class, Chris. All right. Well, first, I want to get some just general reactions from you guys, too, because I think I'm much more excited. And that's totally okay. Mine's, How are you feeling? Mine's all aesthetic-wise. Uh -huh. sure. You know, just coming from the movies and stuff, that gr that gritty, the dark. Mm -hmm. This was a little bit jarring, as in the animation style they chose. I understand it's uh, it, it reminds me of the st Studio Ghibli sort of with mixed in with other yeah. um things I've seen before. I could get past that. I'm one of those people that I could get past visually what what it's presenting. I want to know what's going on mm -hmm. and why the story these wars happening and why these two people are fighting. As soon as I get a grip of that, maybe the the just visual the visual stuff that is not clicking with me i could get past it mm -hmm. you know but other than that it, it was just the animation style i thought it would be a little bit more i don't know if you you would consider this well of course the director he's a what is he japanese he's a japanese director right yes. uh, for mm -hmm. this film yeah so maybe there's that influence in in the animation mm -hmm. too which I, I'm such a sucker for. I love Miyazaki stuff. I cut my teeth on anime, right? That was one of my first kind of gateways into so many different kind of nerd culture properties. And I love the aesthetic. I will give you some of the moments where it switches from traditional 2D animation mm -hmm. to CGI. Does look a little jarring, you know, when doors are opening and things right. like that. But I can totally understand that aesthetic issue, though. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's just coming from the movies. That's all I know. So it's kind of for like sure. comparing. It's hard not to compare them. But I do love the tone of it. It sounds like something big is about to happen. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, when I watched it at first, I was like, oh, okay. So this is going to be like more of an anime style. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't quite sure. So that was like a little bit like, oh, okay. Then my brain had to be like, well, this is going to be anime, but in Lord of the Rings world. Yeah. That's fine. I guess for me, I was like, oh, this is basically, I guess it makes sense. The War of the Rohirrim, it implies it's a civil war. But when it was like, oh, well, uh, I want these two to be betrothed. Well, I don't want to marry this person. Well, the dads fight, and then the one person dies, and now we're going to fight. And it was like, oh, I didn't. I thought the story was going to be a little different. I thought this was going to be more like fighting off the more orcs Sauron and, and all that kind of stuff. And, sure. And, and in, in one sense, that can be refreshing because it's like, okay. And it, it does imply a little like with some edits. There, the rings, there's influence there. Mm -hmm. There's something more there. So I was like a little on the fence, but still leaning towards liking it, mm -hmm. but not like, you know, just jumping Obsessed. right in. Yeah. I'm kind of like, all right, well, let's let's see what people think. But sure. That's why I now defer to you. Educate me <laughs> and why you love it so much. First of all, let's be clear that I have an inherent bias because I love Lord of the Rings more than anything in the world. Mm -hmm. My dog is named Gimli, son of Gloin. My voiceover studio is called speak friend studio i'm obsessed with this my best friend's birthday is this weekend and we're doing a lord of the rings eat along we're doing all the hobbit meals that's great so i'm very into this so war for hiram is going to take place 183 years prior to the events of the lord of the rings trilogy right wow that's all like right. what fortune <laughs> yeah well depending on how long those people yeah, live it depends right. if you're bilbo baggins you're kicking. You're, you're going to be born soon. Mm -hmm. If you are a dude a day, you're, you're just having a great time. Right. right. This is also thousands of years after the events of Rings of Power. So oh, it's kind of okay. in between so these somewhere things. in the middle. Yeah. And so this character here who's on screen right now, this is Hera. And what's really interesting is that she is only referred to in the appendices of Tolkien's writing and never by name. We only know that she is this king's daughter. And so the writers of this show thought, well, this is a really interesting character to kind of center things on and explore this because then you do get to create a lot of your own lore with which how extensive Tolkien and his son were with yeah. the whole world building of Middle Earth and all of its stories I, yeah. and everything. That's a really cool thing to go, oh, here's a nugget that hasn't been explored that I can expand. Well, about. I love that this has a, a touch into the histories then. Yes. Because at first I thought it was just like, well, they're just kind of like making an original story. It is for the most part, but mm -hmm. it's still tied to some of his, his own yeah. histories. It's a history. footnote, but mm -hmm. it's a footnote that is potentially worth exploring. Right. Right. And if, if you haven't read the books, I completely understand they are dense. It's like reading history appendices. That's that's what it is. That's what the Silmarillion is, basically. Well, and what I really like about it is it seems like they're they're starting to interweave different forms of medium 
to connect everything together. Yeah. Which is great. If there's a video game that they release too that actually tells the part, you know, that'd be Ooh. awesome. Like, I really like what they're setting up because even if Rings of Power wasn't everyone's favorite, it still could grow into a better show, right? And so, right. like, this, <laughs> this, if this takes off, we could get a sequel or yeah. maybe another or just, from another timeline yeah, a different exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah a different style yeah. there's Some... so much world to explore here for sure side quest did you ever play shadow of mordor yes i have oh that game is so good it's great but it's i it's a good game you know the games i really like are are just the linear ones that actually followed the movie mm. you know sure. like the two towers those ones you you had to go the direction you they, yeah. they wanted you to go and it, it would tell you the story of the those ones were great i just loved it Absolutely. because it was like a group playing and you have i was always legolas if i could um gimli was also another character i like playing lord of the rings that name is the only reason why i give rings of power a chance why i'm gonna give this a chance it doesn't matter if the trailer didn't work for me i'm still gonna watch it just because of the impact the lord of the rings movies has had on me they have that power over me from those movies. So anything they release, I'm gonna give it a shot. One mm -hmm. film franchise to rule them all, all right. and get Ray right. to watch them I think in the Ray dark. Got a ring. You know? Ray got a ring. <laughs> yeah, perfect. When I, what I think I'm really excited about here too is I love exploring a different medium, to your point, because those first movies, that that trilogy, utilized so many practical effects, had big epic sets, that costs a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying animation is cheap, but you have so fewer Can restrictions. Imagine if you would have to shoot, they would have had to have gone back to where the Lord of the Rings was shot. Exactly. We saw blood and, in this and trailer. Copy, oh. yes. And if you didn't copy those, a lot of those shots, those sweeping shots, people right. would be like, this is, this is just like, sub sub yeah you know, par. Well, amazon's show is the most expensive show ever made and there's moments and where it does not amazing. look good sometimes and there's shots where they're beautiful it does look good but yeah. it's so costly animation allows you to do so much with with just a piece of paper essentially i know that's me just absolutely minimizing what animators do they're incredible they create entire worlds with well that's their just hands. it though the world is in their hands yeah so like you don't have to go into the elements though. exactly so and ray you were starting to say you saw blood in this trailer was there blood in this trailer there I don't remember. is this is rated r okay Ooh. so we are gonna have i think wait 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 wait, wait. this is rated r so this isn't just like a pg-13 like there's gonna be blood and some serious stuff so that means it's i mean the original. i'm pretty sure it is let me double check that some, yeah, chat call, call adult... me out if i'm talking out of my butt okay. about this rating well if, the, if it is r there's gonna be some adult themes probably related to it and if not you know what cares it's lord of the rings <laughs> let's see here uh well i don't see what rating. is it do 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 because we were watching this this morning oh is it pg-13 it is pg-13 okay Okay. All right, well, either way, though. Either way, you're going to... Well, and especially an American PG-13, you're getting tons of violence. It just, yeah, and that was never really an important yeah, part. Yeah, it means of, we're not going to have sexy times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well... We're so, okay womp, womp. Womp, womp. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And just to be clear, too, at the end there, I know we have that hand grabbing some rings and everything. Yeah, so... Okay, so there, there was obvious shots of, like, kings with rings on their hands. Mm -hmm. And then the last shot, it's like, hey, I got the jingle, jingle ring, yeah. So... And then he just covers it. What I have read is that it's a treasure hunter of some sort collecting rings for Sauron. But we have to keep in mind, timeline wise, the one ring is still with Gollum in the Misty Mountains. Yes. Yeah. With him in his cave. Right. So, so they that's just not going to play. A, as a, just a, like a, ah. I think it's for all of us to go, what's that? Oh, what's yeah, like the Titans there? together. Mm, yeah. yeah. Because okay. obviously the events of The Hobbit are going to show us what happens to the ring and send it off on its trajectory. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Does well, that make you guys any more excited, or do you feel like I just took you to a boring history lecture? No, about I'm gonna stuff? watch it. I'm gonna watch it. No okay. matter. Okay. I'm I gonna. Just, yeah. yeah. It, I, I am assuming that the <laughs> the the reviews are gonna be pretty good. I hope so. I'm so. already planning on seeing it. I'm oh, just yeah. like it's one of those movies where it's like I'm 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 either gonna have to be like okay, well this is sort of what I expected, or I'm gonna come out and be like oh that was so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also, I did say yesterday, I think I need one more trailer, just a little. Oh bit. sure. Just a little bit more context, and then I'm I'm good to go. Cool. We want to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Hungry Root. Guys, you know me, I like things that make my life easier, especially things that make it easier for me to eat healthy and eat well, and certainly more effectively than trying to order from food delivery services. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high quality groceries, simple, delicious recipes, and essential supplements. It's like having someone else do all the planning and shopping so you don't even have to think about it. Hungry Root gets to know your personal health goals, dietary restrictions, favorite foods, 
how much time you want to spend cooking and more. Then they build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week, including easy four ingredient recipes to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable so you can take their suggestions or choose anything you want. They've got fresh produce, high quality meat and seafood, healthy snacks, smoothies, sweets, ready to eat meals, kids snacks and meals, vitamins and supplements and much more. Everything from Hungry Root follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good, be quick to make and contain whole trusted ingredients. Right now, Hungry Root is offering the John Campia Show listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Campia to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Campia. Don't forget to use our link so that they know we sent you. Well, guys, question is for you. The War of Rohirrim trailer, are you excited? Are you not into it? Are you going to be there Christmas Day hanging out with me and screaming about this movie? I hope so. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.